Hey guys, welcome to this special collab with my good friend Sofian from Redline Reviews. Thanks for having me, Roman. And Sofian, what are we standing in front of? Um, I guess we're standing in front of the new Lincoln Nautilus, which I actually confuse it for an aviator a lot of the times because it looks so similar. <laughs> now we're here in Palm Springs actually driving the new Nautilus, but guess what? They had the entire product lineup lined up in front of us. So I thought, let's do a video where we kind of give you a quick overview of all four Lincolns. Yeah. Uh, and kind of talk about which one we'd like at the end. So should we start with the uh, least the expensive? The baby one, right, yeah. Um, yeah, so this one is the uh, 2024 Corsair, and this is kind of like their entry-level, small, I'll compact. I'll the hood while you're talking. Compact SUV. This is kind of like, um, similar to the Ford Escape, although I guess Lincoln doesn't like it if you say it's similar to an Escape. Uh, but as you can see, you won't be able to tell it's an Escape because it has its own unique look. Lincoln actually gave it a pretty big refresh uh, in 2023. Uh, I think you may have to actually pull it twice. I keep forgetting <laughs> that. Oh, they're doing the BMW thing. I know, right? Yeah, they are, they are doing the BMW thing. You know, a <laughs> lifetime of pulling it once. <laughs> there we go. That sounded vaguely sexual, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, so this one's the non-hybrid. So you have a two liter turbo, four cylinder, 250 horsepower, 275 torque with an eight speed auto uh, in either front or all wheel drive. Now last year I did some Googling. Uh, Lincoln sold about 81,000 cars. Wow, for, yeah. the, for the US in the entire year. Yes, in the US. Okay. And ma the majority of them were either this one mm -hmm. or the Nautilus. I believe it. Yeah. I, believe, I mean, this is like the hottest segment that uh, the luxury brands compete in. Yeah, so this is obviously a small crossover, uh, kind of like Lexus NX size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so why don't we hop inside? Sure. Uh, Cole, why don't you jump in the back and we'll uh, show them what the inside looks like. And it looks like uh, you may have to unlock the doors, right? I'll unlock it for you. <laughs> well, we did a lot of prep, Sofian. Here, let me unlock it for you. We actually did. We unlocked all the cars. <laughs> there except you go. Not oh, the this one's got the red interior, too. That's fancy. Now, in terms of pricing, I mean, we're starting at about, what, 40000 moving our way up to over 100000 Yes. Yeah, and this one is like the black go. label with, I think, the jet appearance package. So that's why you have this new red interior. And Lincoln never used to do a red interior before, so this is definitely new. Yeah, so um, you'll notice that this still has a round steering wheel. Yes. And that'll be an important uh, distinction when we get to the next car. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, family DNA in these cars, right? You've got the little controls here. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got real volume knobs. You've mm -hmm. got a pretty large size screen. Uh, this one also has, look at that. How Actual shocking. manual vents instead of those fancy electronic ones. <laughs> uh, uh, diff different drive modes. <laughs> Let's see if it'll turn on here. No, okay. no key detected, of yeah. course. <laughs> of course, we left that outside. Um, you know, a big sunroof uh, and uh, heads-up display. I do like kind of the craftsmanship that they put into the car. Mm -hmm. There's a sense of quality about it that I think, uh, you know, is befitting of an American luxury brand. Yeah, I mean, like, even though this is based on the Escape, I mean, you really can't tell looking at it. It's got its own, like, nicer materials. It's got a bigger 13.2-inch display with a 12-inch display, and you can't get this red leather in the Escape. So it definitely has a nice upscale feel to it. But the question is, you know, how would you compare it to its competitors, right? Ooh. Like, is I mean, it yeah. BMW X1? X3, X3, X3 okay. Audi Q5, right. GLC, NX, RDX. There's a ton of really good options in this space. So uh, to choose this car, you have to, I guess, either really like the styling or like the Lincoln brand. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, uh, I kind of like this. That's kind of cool. The little uh, talk button. Oh, I <laughs> see, I would accidentally hit that while I'm driving. <laughs> and then the thing would be talking to me. Oh, how can I help you? I'll be yeah, like, no, yeah, but you can't help me. <laughs> it's a lot better than, hey, Mercedes. That's true. <laughs> when you say that by accident in the car. Yeah, there's no hey, Lincoln, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll park the Mercedes. So, what? No, so, shut up, Mercedes. <laughs> I didn't, didn't want you to come up. Uh, you know, um, I mean, the thing about these Lincolns is uh, I think... Over the last maybe even 20 to 30 years, Lincoln has really struggled for an identity that is separate and apart from Ford, mm -hmm. right? Because obviously to save money, you're sharing uh, platforms, uh, and it's hard to have a bespoke, expensive, elegant car that's built kind of on a cheaper version of it. Right, yeah. right. No, absolutely. Um, obviously, Lincoln has some work to do, but, you know, this for an entry-level model, I think that they're definitely in the right direction. Let's see. Let me check the room in the back, and then we'll... Uh, we'll Open the hatch, see how much room is back there. Yeah. You think I fit, Sofian? I don't think I fit. <laughs> how tall are you again, Roman? I'm 6'2". I okay. bet you. I, I, well, I do fit. That's a, that's a pleasant surprise. Okay. Uh, and it know. looks like the seats, actually, they do slide forward and back and they recline, which is unexpected in this class. Yeah, they're slid as far back as possible. Now I reclined them. So 
So now I have some headroom, but you know, I'm sitting behind myself. You know, it's a small compact <laughs> SUV. I yeah. do like the fact you have heated seats in the back. That's a nice touch. Yeah. Uh, and I do like this blood lead blood red leather. I think yes, that's... it definitely shows that Lincoln is trying to appeal to a younger crowd with the red leather. So why are they having this program here in Palm Springs? <laughs> where, all, where all the retired people go from Shouldn't California. Shouldn't it be in right? Coachella? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of room back there. there yeah. Is, there is a lot of room back there. Yeah, I mean, it's very comparable to something like the NX. I think the RDX may have a little more space. There's also a temporary spare, which is nice. You don't have to deal with a fix-a-flat kit. But and you, overall, and you know what I like far. about this? I like the, actually the real exhaust pipes. Yes, you which know? you don't find on the new Nautilus when we get to that vehicle. Yeah, let's head over there. <laughs> we'll close this one up. Oh, electric, electric clothes. <laughs> so uh, you're going to have a review of this. We just got done driving it. Um, so coming up on Redline Reviews, you'll have a complete driving review of this. Uh, but for right now, let's just kind of do a walk around. Sure. Uh, and what do you think? Uh, well, here, come on to the front. I'll show you kind of the most interesting thing besides the door handle. Do you like the door handles? You know, I think they are definitely a design statement. Um, and they're not hard, I think, to get used to. But uh, they're still a part of me that's like, why don't you just do a traditional one? But I can see why they want to be different. And then, of course, what, what's unique about the front of this, it's been redesigned, is that this is backlit. And then these little LEDs run back and forth. Yeah, you... so they this one's the black label model, and it's called Lincoln Embrace. So if you have the key fob on you, it the star will illuminate, and then all the lights will kind of just go out to the rest of the vehicle to kind of welcome you to the car. And we would show you, but it's in the afternoon in Palm Springs with the sun directly <laughs> Very bright camera. sun on the right on the wrong side too of the yeah. car. All right, so let me pop the hood now. Um, this one is available in a hybrid. Yes. Uh, it's not available in a plug-in hybrid. They did away with that, interestingly. I guess nobody bought them. Yeah, so um, the Nautilus actually never offered a plug-in hybrid. It was actually the Aviator, which... Oh, sorry, you're right. Aviator, I got <laughs> it, that. It, yeah. Honestly, I don't blame you. You can, no. you can easily confuse the two. Thank you, so, Sophie, so this model that we're looking at is actually the non-hybrid. It's the 2-liter turbo that's also in the Corsair, 250 horsepower, 275 torque, 8-speed auto. All-wheel drive, however, is standard on this model for 2024. Yeah, and when, nice. you, when you add the uh, hybrid version, you're up to what, 300 and... 310. 310 310, horsepower. which is a new powertrain for them because they've basically taken this turbo and then they added a 100-kilowatt electric motor, and it uses a CVT as opposed to the 8-speed. Eight 8-speed, yeah. Yeah, so I didn't drive it. We can't talk about it. But if you want to know what it drives like, like I said, head on over Airline Reviews, <laughs> and we'll t we'll, t we'll tell you. Yes, that over we there. did. We did a zero to sixty test on both engines, so we'll tell you that on March fourteenth at six a.m. He works much energy. harder than I do. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> uh, what do you think of twenty ones? We're rolling on twenty ones. Um, so twenty ones, I think, are standard. These are the twenty twos, though. Oh, we're they, rolling on twenty. I know, yeah, because it has the jet appearance package on a two fifty five wide tire. It's actually, I think, it looks fantastic. I also love the finish of the wheel. Uh, it's probably a pain in the butt to clean, but it, it looks good on the lines of the car for sure. Yeah, so why don't you hop in the passenger seat, I'll hop in the driver's yeah. seat, and we'll kind of go over the inside of the vehicle. I'll close this. Now, much bigger car. Obviously. Do you want me to grab the key, Roman, so we can turn it on? Yeah, we'll do. Obviously, like the RX size, Lexus <laughs> RX. Yeah, so this one that we're in is also the black label, so it has the chalet, uh, Venetian leather interior and I have to say this interior really screams like expensive and fancy to me I mean this is a this class is the mid-size luxury class so it competes with something I, like a I Lexus all the RX keys. yes this huge wad of keys so we can <laughs> <laughs> at least turn because we have to be able to turn this car on the screen here that panoramic display that's nearly 50 inches across. This is the showstopper of this car. And that's a great intro to something that doesn't work. <laughs> because this, this car is in accessory mode. Okay. <laughs> it's like it was working earlier, but at least the air conditioning is coming on, sort of. But oh, there, it might be dead, actually. I, I see the lights flickering. Yeah, yeah, this one I think is not. All the annoying YouTubers have been turning the car on and off, and it seems like it's dead. <laughs> um, so the, if you watch our reviews, you'll see that this is a 50, what, two inch screen all the way across? 48 inch screen, so. You're close. <laughs> oh, here we go. Now it's turning on. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, now it's beeping. Oh. Well, at least it came on. Yes. All right, good. Um, now, um, free collision assist not available. Yes, I know it's throwing all kinds of codes. Don't blame the car for that. It's yeah. here as a display vehicle. Yes, it's hooked up to an inverter, so ignore all the warnings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so uh, I, I got to tell you, if I tell you this, you won't be able to unsee it, but this wheel to me looks like it's upside down. You see what I'm saying? Shouldn't this be, wheel be like this 
part that jets out? Shouldn't that oh. be like that? Oh, uh, okay. Now I can't unsee it. Thank you. You, you know what I mean? Now it looks, <laughs> looks, looks, looks upside down. Yeah, that wheel is definitely interesting. When I first saw it, and I was you know, kind of just putting my hands on it, I was like, oh, this is a square wheel. It's different. But I can see why, because they wanted this part to not be in the way um, when you're trying to look at the instrument panel that's ahead of you. Um, yeah, so it's trying, but but when I drive it, I put my wheel up a little higher so it does block the instrument panel. <laughs> of course. God, there's a lot of error messages. Please don't take this out on. It wasn't doing this yesterday, for that's for sure, when I was filming no, this car. No, <laughs> we don't want this. The other cool thing is, let's see if this works. So you can go there, and then you can go there, and then you can take like the tire pressure and put it up there, and it puts it up there on the screen. How cool is that? Huh? Yeah, and look at the way the graphic even kind of comes onto the screen. It has like a really high tech, futuristic look to it, and also the graphics or the processing speed is a lot faster because this is now built off of a Google Automotive Android base system, and it's just a huge upgrade over Sync Four. We're not going to enable location. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't doing all this yesterday, so. Yeah. <laughs> so you could have weather there. Uh, what do you think of the push button? You know, Lincoln's been doing the piano, yeah. the piano keys for the transmission selector. Uh, I still haven't really gotten used to it. There are definitely times where I started messing with this the <laughs> wiper stock to try to put it into gear, but I guess it's it's different. What really shocked me, however, is like that the, the glass controls and the giant volume knob. Yes, yeah. an actual volume knob as opposed actually to like, a, a slider. I actually like the switches. I think they're very tactile. Mm -hmm. What I don't like is that they copied Tesla with this, ah. which is this kind of you know <laughs> figuring out what, what's hard about just going. Ooh, ooh, or do, do, right? You know what I mean? This, 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 do you really, this is not, this does not make life better. Yeah, I would worry about something like that breaking, but I guess the reason why they did it is because you have like these special like modes where you can do a motion and it actually oscillates like the, the air around you, which I guess is kind of cool. Like if you guys like to have moving air around you, but it's also something for to break. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're recreating one of those old-fashioned fans that goes... Mm, mm, yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, I'm not in love with it. Um, I, I don't really... like like That seems like a answer in search of a question. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but having said that, you know, everything you touch, once again, is uh, feels expensive. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of premium materials in this car. Um, if you go over there, you can see, I think... Okay, you can correct me on this, but 28 speakers, Sophia? You're right, actually. 28 Dang, speakers. I got one right. Uh, I mix, you, it's easy to mix up with the seats because these seats are 24 ways. So I mix them up constantly, but they're heated, ventilated, and massaging. Actually, the heated and cooled seat is standard even on the base version. Well, they raised... Um, no, it was on that one. Sorry. Never mind. <laughs> they raised the price by $5,000. <laughs> they did. You're, uh, they raised the price by, of this one by three grand compared to the old model. So you weren't but, far but off. But I do like the Burmeister kind of design on the speaker. Grill. Yeah, the metal speakers. I mean, that's kind of all part of the whole the ambiance with these luxury brands. I mean, we've got almost 30 speakers. You have to have something to kind of show off like this is the fancy audio system. And then if you go to, I'm sure, one of our videos, you'll see, because this one doesn't have it yet, but you'll see the, I call it the Lincoln Massage where you can actually, they call it reinvigorate, I believe, or rejuvenate. Uh, rejuvenate, right? yep. Yeah, <laughs> where you can actually <laughs> allow the vehicle to massage you and blow hot air on you and, and, and you know. Yeah, no, you can, um, it's supposed to be over here, but for some reason it's not here. But you can see there are these little scents that you can do for the digital scents. I actually really like these. Um, some people, again, get a headache from the perfume smell, but it, it works pretty fast and instantly. And if you want to go into the massaging seats, they're right here, which I actually think the massage function in these Lincolns works really well. And I also appreciate the fact that they it doesn't turn off. I literally like was able to leave it on and it stayed on for like 20, 30 minutes straight and it didn't shut off like some of these other cars. Yeah, that is nice. Uh, you know, Mercedes did the sense a while ago. Energizer Comfort, I think that's what they call All right, it. Yeah, so, so it's not, not the first time, but right. I, I do appreciate that it smells like a luxury hotel, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Because nice. you don't want this, because actually what I noticed, Roman, is some of these, like, you know, because we test a ton of cars every year, and I definitely notice when we get into a less expensive car, the plastics don't smell, smell the best, especially no. if it sits out in the hot sun, you can definitely smell the... the yeah, they're off-gassing, right? Yeah. Whatever, whatever they've <laughs> built it out of is now... You're breathing, and I'm sure that can't be great for you. Right. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm also kind of not a huge fan of this. Yeah, that's actually kind of what Lexus does with their touch-sensitive buttons, because you have to kind of rest your finger on it, and then it, yeah, it so highlights what it it's, is. It shows you basically what, what it does right there on the screen. Uh, to me, maybe I'm old fuddy-duddy, but just put what it does on the steering wheel. I know it's not as elegant or as minimalist, mm. but it, it'll never stop working. Right, again, that's something to break. It yeah. looks great now while the car is new, but it's something to break down the road. Let's sit in the back, see what's yeah. in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it off. There we go, the car will be happy. <laughs> Let's 
Well, I won't let you sit down because there's a little plaque there. The one unusual thing about this car, besides all the kind of new technology, is it's built in China. Yeah, yeah. it is It is built in China. And I know some people may be turned off by that idea. But you know what, Roma? I actually find the build quality of this model to be pretty good. Yeah, the Chinese uh, are getting very good at building cars, aren't mm -hmm. they? Tons of room back here. You know, they said uh, best-in-class legroom. Uh, and I think that's partially because it's also sold in China, right? And the Chinese like small engines, two liters with big back seats because mm -hmm. they like being driven as opposed to driving. And so I kind of feel like that that may be more, you know. Yeah, so they said 43.1 inches of legroom. That's six more inches than the RX. This I was, was going to say 42, but you nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I remember this number, but <laughs> but it's definitely great. If you want a big back seat, this is what you're going to be what you're going to be looking at. Then, Roman, what do you think of the rear of this thing, the design of it? Well, you know, this is kind of everybody's going to this big the light blade, uh, light blade across the back <laughs> to give it kind of a, a wider stance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, once again, <laughs> you've kind of got these kind of semi fake, you know, via Audi uh, where the exhaust would normally be mm -hmm. and they're hidden, tucked underneath. I kind of like the um, Corsair better where we actually right. see the exhaust. The exposed exhaust. One thing I actually yeah. noticed before you open that, or, um, there's no badging back here. You notice that there's just one Lincoln badge. Yeah, there's right only there. badging on the side of the car. Mm -hmm. So, huge interior though, look at that. Yeah, I think they said 36 cubic feet of space, almost 70 when you fold down the seats. And I think the RX has only like 46 total when you fold it down. So, a lot more cargo space yeah, than the RX. Yeah, big. It's a big old American. Chinese made <laughs> <laughs> car. All right, let's go to the next uh, one up. And this is, of course, a three row now. Yeah. And uh, now I'll, I'll open up the hood and I'll remember to pull twice this time. <laughs> and this is actually the newest vehicle in the Lincoln lineup currently because this is the only 2025 model out of these four cars that we're looking Which at. Which begs the question why does it have the funky uh, door handles? Right, yeah, because I mean, well, the design of this car came out in 2019 as a 2020. Because uh, remember, this is built off of the same rear drive architecture as the Explorer. Now, this is the car where Lincoln used to offer a plug-in hybrid. Did you ever drive the plug-in hybrid, though, Roman? No, I didn't. It wasn't great. Oh. When, maybe, when I, when I drove it... That's why they didn't sell many. When I drove it, it the, the powertrain wasn't the most refined. It made strange noises. It was kind of herky-jerky. Grand Touring, right? That's what yes. they called it? Yes. And the range wasn't wonderful. It was like in the low 20s, uh, especially considering the price. So now all of them just have the 3-liter twin-turbo V6, uh, making 400 horsepower, 415 pound-feet torque. It's essentially the same engine in the Explorer ST. Yeah, there's a, and it's basically an Explorer ST right. underneath, yeah. So right. that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it in two-wheel drive or yes. you can get it in four-wheel drive. Yes, rear-wheel drive. That's something that Ford and Lincoln were very proud of because you can get this as a rear drive. The engine is mounted uh, longitudinally as opposed to a transverse engine. Uh, I imagine most people are going to get four-wheel drive. This model that we're looking at is the Reserve 3 package, I think. So uh, it is all-wheel drive. The black label, though, will come standard with all-wheel drive. So it goes, what, Premier, Reserve, black label. Mm -hmm. and I yep. think I think if you, if you load this one up, you can get to 80K. It's getting up there. It's actually almost 90, I think. Is the it? Okay. Yeah, the black label is 87 grand, which I'm just like, All right, oh 90K. God, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money. That's X5 money. I mean, but I guess this kind of competes with the X5, although size-wise, it's about five inches longer than an X5. All right, let's jump inside. Yeah. yeah. Here, you get behind, you get, you get behind the okay. uh, driver's steering wheel this time. I'll, 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 you know, I'm a sucker. I'm a sucker for two things. I'm a sucker for, like, knee bolsters that are independent. Right. And, Cole, you can kind of show that. <laughs> so, uh... I just love this. It's a very European feature, and when they have them separated, that to me designates luxury. Yeah, so these are the 30-way perfect position seats. Uh, did, and did we leave the keys in the car? Uh, I think I left them in the Nautilus. All right, I'll, I'll run, I'll <laughs> They're run. in the car console. I'll, I'll run and get them. <laughs> Too many keys, right? So, exactly. Yeah, so this one has the 30-way perfect position seats, and they're heated, ventilating, and massaging. And, you know, I have a love-hate relationship with these seats because I love the fact that there's so many ways you can adjust them but sometimes Roman I find it hard to find an actual comfortable driving position I don't know if you feel the same way I think they're uh, finicky and fussy <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean there's just too many sometimes too many choices aren't ideal and you hit the nail right on the head that's kind of how I feel about it too because then you're kind of like Goldilocks it's like uh no 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 I can't get comfortable at this you know you know you can set your you know favorite position and then it has it mm -hmm. but nevertheless it's it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, so once again now we have traditional vents which i love mm -hmm. uh, more of a much more traditional layout everything's kind of more upright from the outgoing model uh, obviously different drive modes uh, once again you know very nice leather uh, i like this i like when it kind of does that when the wood kind of goes in like that um, for me uh, i love big american cars mm -hmm. uh, and so i'm getting more kind of toward 
the level of car that, that I would pr purchase. Yeah, I mean, and, and this car definitely has the space that people are looking for. And what, what I love about the Aviator is it gives you that third row without the, kind of the bulk of the Navigator, which we'll get into after right, this. What's that? I think that's the traction control button. That, that looked, what, <laughs> I thought that was like the turbo boost. Yep, traction control off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting uh, it looks like a little look. turbo, doesn't it? Yeah, it but does, it, actually. Or a wheel. It's a, <laughs> oh, yeah, gotcha, yeah. Yeah, so for 2025, Lincoln did actually update the infotainment system. The old one had a 10.1-inch display. This is 3 inches bigger, so it's now 13.2. And then you have a 12.4-inch display here. I'm actually kind of surprised, Roman, they didn't put the big pillar-to-pillar -pillar panoramic display in this car considering the price level of the Aviator compared to the Nautilus. I think they're sticking their toe in the water. I, want, I think they want to know if this is something people like or if it's something that they don't like. And right. if people like it, they'll probably add it to the rest of the lineup. Yeah, I mean, you do at least have the new Lincoln Digital Experience. So again, Lincoln and Ford is kind of phasing away from Sync 3. So this interface is all new. You can actually play video games on it. You can stream YouTube and you know watch videos on here as well. Uh, and the graphics are much better. The processing speed, as you can see, is, is much better. So, so you know, like Aston Martin and uh, Porsche have announced that they're actually going to go to Apple for the software that runs this, right? It's not just CarPlay, okay. but yep. it's actually going to be the, 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 the iOS of the car, right? right. The internal operating system. Um, you think that this is something that's going to spread throughout the entire lineup? Do you think car make, but there's a lot of data that you can collect mm -hmm. and that is valuable. Um, you think, obviously, GM's gone the other way, right? Because they're getting rid of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Auto especially in the electric cars. Do you think Ford is going to lean that way? I hope they don't. I, I hope mean, so too, I yeah. like the fact, because even the new Nautilus has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto still, and this car still has it as well. So I, I, I genuinely think people still want that. Um, and I think that by getting rid of it, I think that's a mistake. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, overall, this interior, uh, it's not the black label interior, but it's still pretty nice. I can see the steering wheel of this one's the older one. It doesn't have those little touch-sensitive buttons along with that square wheel. They did add Blue Cruise this year, which is standard across the board. Uh, I think you have to you get 90 days free or four years free on the black label model. Uh, and you also have that button that you like, Roman. <laughs> and, you, and, you know, Blue Cruise works really well. We had it in our Lightning when we had it for a while. Okay. Uh, drove across country. As you know, we drove that thing all the way up to Alaska. So Blue Cruise was really nice. Uh, and they keep improving it, right? They keep making it more natural. So like if there's a truck next to you, it moves over as opposed to hugging the road right. where the truck is. So yeah, it's it's a good feature. And uh, uh, you know, it's very relaxing and certainly, you know, for I think it's level two autonomy at this point. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, they do offer the lane change. I mean, actually, you're right, Ford and Lincoln have made big improvements because I remember when it first came out and I had it on my Mach-E, yep. I wasn't too impressed with it then because it kind of just always ping-ponged between the lane and it would shut itself off randomly. So Ford's making some big improvements, which is good because that feature is nice on a road trip. All right, let me get in the back, show you guys how much room there is. It's... <laughs> well, why don't you get in the back this time? Yeah, sure, I'll get in the yeah, back. you get in the back. Here. You show them how much room there is. I'll let you do it. Now I am the shorter person here. I'm only five foot seven compared to like Roman six two, but uh, oh, look at all that room you got! I know, right? And this is with the seat actually slid up, but slide it back. You can see there's a ton of space. I you, could easily. You know what I like about this is one push. Yeah, that's a that's a nifty feature. Yeah, it makes it easy to get into the third row because obviously this center console doesn't move, so that's your only way to get into the uh, third row area. But um, but yeah, I think Lincoln said that this has around 39 inches of legroom. You can see there's rear seat air vents. You can get it with heated and ventilated seats in the second row. I don't think this has the option for it. It just has the heated seats. You have like a little 5.8 inch screen. And this console here, you can actually open and close the sunshade of the roof. You have like a little covered storage area over here. So to me, this almost feels as nice as the uh, as the front row. And then again, a lot of I think a lot of parents really appreciate this is the sunshade that you get back here to kind of help if your kids are sleeping back. Yeah, here. now we're talking about uh, X five to seven, somewhere in there, right? BMW. This, this car is very much like GX a size. in between. Yeah. yeah, or TX. This is basically Lincoln's answer to the TX. But I guess, should I show them the third row, Roman, and see how does somebody like myself get back here? Yeah, but... why don't you? I'll grab the keys so we don't forget them in here. <laughs> Yeah, so this car only seats uh, two people across back here. Um, so if you're looking for something that can seat three across, obviously this 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 one here maxes out at six. But if I start moving this seat back, you can see there's 29 inches of legroom is what Lincoln says. But I guess for somebody my height, I can sit back here. And my knees are kind of jammed up against this, but headroom space is okay. I don't think, Roman, you'd be very comfortable back here. <laughs> no, I appreciate you going back there, dude. really. <laughs> it pays to be shorter. This is where I, I like this is where I like being shorter because I kind of fit into everything. But, but here's the real question, right? <laughs> Uh, on these um, three rows, usually you can have kids or you can have their stuff. Yes. Right? You can never have both. No, so, you can't. <laughs> so let's see if this is any different. And I bet you it isn't. 
It's yeah, it's better. You can get like two roller bags in there. You know, it's more. I've like the the GX uh, and the TX. You're you know you're you're at the very back of the windshield. Look yeah. So I, the GX, I remember the new. Even the new one was horrible. It yeah. was like ten cubic feet. I think Lincoln says eighteen for this, which is not bad. But I think the new TX has around twenty one. So a little bit more because it's a little bit of a longer vehicle. But yeah, this isn't too bad. I mean, you have some underfloor storage in there as well. I don't know how many roller bags you could fit, but. I think it'd be a tight squeeze if you had six adults. I, I like the quad exhaust. Yes, it's a nice touch. Real yeah. quad exhaust system, which gives it a sportier. Like I think it's important actually for these upscale brands. It kind of just finishes off the rear end nicely. No, I agree. I think it's also signaling kind of power and you know how how uh, how sporty they are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the big boy now, I, dude. I haven't been in this thing <laughs> probably for two, three years <laughs> since it first came out, so it's been a while. Yeah, should we talk about the outside first room? Yeah, I'll open, I'll open up the... Oh, um, yeah, the hood, that's right. I'll open up the hood, yeah. So, of course, this competes with the Escalade. Yes. It would be its direct competitor. Yeah, so I, I think Lincoln is actually getting rid of, ready to show off a new generation of this. They were hinting about that potentially later this year. Um, but it got a pretty significant refresh in 2022. Um, but you can see the design definitely looks a little older compared to the other models, but I still think this is a handsome looking uh, big hey, SUV. Hey, guess what? You only have to pull once on this one. <laughs> Which is different. It's like, you think they'd keep it consistent, but it is different. Yeah. So that's, of course, the bigger 3.5 uh, twin turbo, right? Out of the yeah, so this is basically out of the Raptor, 450 yeah. horsepower, 510 torque, 10 speed auto, uh, I think either rear or four wheel drive as well. And it's a, I think it's a real four wheel drive system at a low range, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, it's got plenty of power. I think I tested one. It was like under six seconds, zero to 60, which is pretty quick for now, something that's this big. <laughs> now, these are 22s. I did get to go check out the latest uh, version of the uh, Tahoe and the Suburban. You can get 24s on that. 24s. Fours, yeah. That's 24s. Ridiculous. That's just... I mean, I remember there was a time where 22s were like the big wheels in the aftermarket. And now yeah. we're talking about a factory 24. It's just kind of nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you like the styling? You know, I... I the styling of this car, I don't love, hmm. I have to admit. Like, I, I, the refresh kind of helped, um, but I th I'm looking forward to seeing the next generation because I like what Lincoln's doing for the new Nautilus. It's a little bit aviator. locomotive. A little bit, There's yeah. There's like a little bit of a locomotive feel to it, <laughs> which I'm not sure is the most uh, elegant of design. Hop in, Cole. All right, I'll get, since I'm over here, I'll get over here. And now we're looking at a car that's probably, you know, in the hundred thousand dollar range. Oh yes, yeah. This car I think starts at eighty-two thousand. Um, this one that we're looking at is the black label, so you're you're talking about uh, like a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty grand maybe. But that's kind of right where the Escalade is as well. Yeah, depending on of course how you spec it. Uh, and uh, same thing, giant sunroof. Uh, God, I don't like the push button <laughs> transmission. I know Lincoln has quadrupled down on it, but I do see. So here you don't have that weird like you know touchpad but you have real buttons yes and i like this so much better right and it shows you the age of this car because i think it came out in like 2017 or something like that so but it's better yeah i mean it, know, there, there was nothing wrong with this i guess right yeah. but i guess with those they just wanted to make it more i guess modern and high tech and same thing you got you know you got the multi-way seats which may be too much uh, <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have you know the giant screen so maybe it's coming but i like the wood yeah the, although i'm surprised that it's glossy you think a lot of brands are going to a matte finish but it does look good with this chalet interior. there's a version of this that has like uh like a, 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 a kind of topical math map of new york oh uh, it's in the um aviator grand touring is I it think, yeah i think I, I remember them showing that in yeah the, that was kind of cool grand touring i like that but I love I love being behind the wheel of these giant cars. You just feel like you know king you, of the road. You, you feel like you've made it, right? Yeah. <laughs> let's let's look in the back. <laughs> you feel like you've done it. I'll, I'll get in the second row. I also noticed Roman it has traditional pool style door handles too, unlike the uh, push button ones. Look at this! Oh my God, we've got captain's chairs back here. We've got more uh, screens, and you can shake a stick at uh, these. I think also. Interestingly, um, they're not electric. At this price point, you would think it'd be electric. Yeah, although yeah. Um, I, I think Lincoln does offer a massaging second row seat, but this one doesn't have it because it's missing the center console. Um, but it's pretty tight. Look at my head. Ooh, yeah. wow, I did not expect that. Yeah, I mean, these panoramic sunroofs probably take up a good inch, maybe an inch and a half yeah. of, of roof. Do you want to get in the back? Are you up Sure, forward? I will get into the third right. row and okay. see what it's like back here. I mean, this is the. these types of vehicles typically have third rows that can be or where it can accommodate an adult, but, oh, that's interesting. It's not quite as automatic as it was in the uh, Aviator, but. Ancient tech, dude, it's, <laughs> what is it, three years old now? Two years old, But you Come know on. what? This thing can actually sit three people across, so you can sit up to eight people in here, and 
wow, this is actually pretty spacious. Like my legs aren't jammed up against this seat like it was in the Aviator. Headroom space actually is kind of getting tight, even for me. So Roman, you definitely have to go like this. Well, you've got that seatbelt coming out of the seat. <laughs> oh, that's true right here. Okay. But still, it feels, it definitely feels a little bit claustrophobic in terms of head, headroom space. But this car is so wide that you can easily fit three people across back here, which is a plus. And you also have a power recline function for this third row. So that's fancy. But no heated rear seats back here. That's something you can get in like a BMW X7. So here's the funny thing, right? I've actually never seen anybody who bought one of these except for livery companies. <laughs> I know that's a horrible thing to say, but have you seen like a, uh, you know, it seems like it's a very good car if you're picking people up at the airport and you want to impress yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, anytime I'm looking for an Uber Black, it's usually a navigator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and maybe that, that says more about Ford's uh, reliability and cost of maintenance. Maybe, I don't know. All right, let's 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 check, uh, it's, it's belted down. Oh, that's yeah. right, here, I'll go around it. Yeah. <laughs> So once again, it's about the same, you know, as the uh, uh, Aviator, right? Yeah, actually, I'm surprised it's not more. And this yeah. model is not the long wheelbase, though. This is the short wheelbase model. So, that's the thing is they do offer one, I think it's like a foot and a half longer. And that's precisely why, because the cargo space back here isn't wonderful if you actually have to carry seven people. You get a jack, but you don't, maybe there's a spare tire underneath. Here, I can look, let's see. This is where usually in truck, yep, it's back here. It looks like a, it looks like a full size spare, too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's really impressive. It's hard to say, but it looks like it. Yeah. All right. So, at the beginning of this video, I said, which of these would you buy if you wanted to stay within the Lincoln brand? So, which of these would you buy? Hmm. Now, do I have like a budget in mind, or it's no, like no a budget? Un unlimited. Unlimited amount of money. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you know, I've always been partial to the Aviator, but. Um, I kind of think that with the new Nautilus out, I'm really impressed with it. I mean, that screen is definitely a showstopper. It's kind of a game changer. Um, and I'm looking forward to actually spending a little bit more time with the car. But I mean, the way it looks also, it looks like kind of like a baby aviator. It has the hybrid powertrain. Uh, and it's also not, you know, a six figure price tag like this vehicle or, or that vehicle over there. So I probably would go with this one. Uh, for me, it's no doubt the Navigator, you mm -hmm. know, uh, the most important thing for me is this very... <laughs> you want your comfort and space, Roman. That's no, your... <laughs> no, no. I want to feel special. Okay, that's true. And, and that makes me feel special, right? That makes me feel like if I show up somewhere, uh, the valet is going <laughs> to jump gonna... to attention. <laughs> You're going to park it out front for you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, even though it costs a lot more. So, guys, if you want to see a review of the uh, new... Uh, I'm getting mixed up now. Not Nautilus. Nautilus. Yeah, thank you. you. Have to look at it. <laughs> the names are hard. Uh, head on over to Red uh, Line Reviews, uh, where uh, it'll be up shortly, at some point. Yeah. Yeah. March 14th, when the embargo ends. Yeah, and you'll have uh, two zero to sixty, so you can see the difference between the hybrid and the non-hybrid. Uh, and if you want to see me stumble through a review, just head on over to <laughs> All TFL, <laughs> where where me, Andre, Nathan, and the rest of the team stumble through many reviews. It's All been right. a long day, Roman. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long day. All right. See you guys next time. Take Ciao. care.